Evening all. Evening all. That was a piece of music from the hymn book. Now, we haven't played anything from the hymn book for a very long time. And people out there were guessing what it might have been. It's number 369 in my hymn book. And it's a melody that sort of, it appears quite regularly in hymn books around the world. You, you'll recognize the, sort of the, first, the first line. which appears in the English hymnal and all sorts of other British and English-speaking hymnals, but then what happens after that is completely different. And I've just rubbed my eye having eaten chilli tonight. Ooh, that's going to sting like hell. OK, bear with me while that comes back. Well, anyway, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Gartrell gang. Good evening, boys and girls. Good evening, everybody. I hope you are having a wonderful time in 2022 so far. I know we are. And tonight we're going to have great fun with these magnificent organs. Now. We've been playing around. You will see a new camera angle. I have a new camera over my head looking down on the keys to change things. We've gotten rid of the GoPro that was here. It's no longer here. It's somewhere else. Have you shown it yet? Yeah, it has to have shown. Has to have shown? Ah, I wanted to do that as a surprise. Version. Ah, the, 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 ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, we've got a surprise for you later on. Um, we have recommissioned one of our cameras to do something else. So, and we've worked out how to do it and to get it work steadily. And it's rather good. Now, um, this evening, I'm going to be playing a lot of different kinds of music, but there's a kind of recurring theme through this evening's uh, concert. And it's something to do with harmonies. Now, um, the world of harmony is very clever. You all know what a harmony is. It's two notes that sound at the same time. Harmony, that's a third, that's a third, that's a second, that's also a second. Different kinds of harmonies in these, but we're not going to go into that kind of detail. What we're going to do is we're going to look at pieces of music, in between all the other stuff I'm playing, look at pieces of music that have very simple harmonies, pieces of music that don't really do very much. Um, when I say simple harmonies, that means they don't have many different harmonies. It means they sort of do the same kind of thing over and over and over and over again. For example...
earth was that, I hear you ask? Well, that was something <clears throat> I wanted to do for a very long time. Now, it sounded sort of, someone said ethereal. I'm not sure that's a word I would look for. Um, the, idea, the idea is that I was playing harmonies in pairs. What does that mean? So if I have, um, for example, I started off with this chord. <laughs> Okay, and then I change to these pairs. Yeah, sort of relate, related. And then I started moving further afield. Now, as I was building the organ up, um, I started playing around with different things, but I kept the harmonies in pairs. And what I wanted to talk about tonight is something rather clever. Let me quickly change my registrations here again. Um, I think we will go for... I don't know, actually. Let's go for some soft stuff, shall we? Yes, let's have some soft stuff. Um, some of the finest songs in the world, and I say songs because I do mean songs, popular songs, um, were written using sometimes only two, sometimes only three, sometimes only four different harmonies. And that was it. And they just sort of repeat those harmonies the whole time. They keep going and going and going. And that creates a sort of a, a safe feeling. A very safe feeling. Now, here's a piece of music based around four chords. And it was requested by, and I hope he's watching tonight. I know he's on holiday on Malta. Um, this was requested by a friend of the channel called Norbert. Um, and um, four chords, that's it, four chords. Now, I'm not going to play the piece exactly as Norbert requested it for the simple reason that copyright will go crazy and um, I'll get into trouble but I'm going to play around those four chords. You will recognize the piece of music. You all have heard it at some point in your life. It's quite modern, and it's very popular, and it's something that Vanessa actually loves. Um, and when she met me years ago, she thought, ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to be with a, with, a, with a pianist and an organist together. I'm going to have someone who will sit and play the piano to me every night, and I will play gorgeous romantic music. And how often have I done that? Mm. Never. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. That's not true. That's such a problem is when you live with a professional musician, they don't want to play 24 hours a day. So I kept telling her that she, if she wants someone who plays kitschy music no. for her 24 hours a day, then she needs an amateur. Sorry? Mr. Oh, she got that right. She says she only wants me. Isn't that cute? Right. Four chords. See if you can work out what I'm playing.
as Vivian C. said, it's the going on forever song. That's true, but let's think about that for a minute. Let's think about that. Some of the most famous melodies, also from church time that we can think of, repeat a number of chords all the time, a mantra of sorts. Let's think. For example, here, on my page of music, this is going to get copyright claimed, Laudate Omnes Gentes. Remember that? That Taizé chant. Um, a chant, exactly. It's something that repeats itself over and over and over again. And the idea behind it is it sort of, it just sort of, it, it relaxes you around. Um, it relaxes you in your mind, body and spirit. I'm getting very esoteric tonight, aren't I? This is not the sort of thing we normally do. Um, but that's what this kind of music does. Now, think of Pachelbel and his legendary canon and those... How many chords is that? Two, three, four, five, let's say six. And that's it. That's all it does. And then it repeats itself and repeats itself and there's all sorts of melodies going on around and fancy things happening. That's, you know, music's been doing this for hundreds of years, probably for thousands of years. Um, so when you say, oh, but music, you know, music with only two or three chords or four chords, that's boring. Well, it's not. It's been done before. And the idea is it sort of, it lends itself or it lends music a sense of security. There we are. That's what I was trying to say. Now, some of the most famous music that has very few chords would, of course, be, would, of course, be, anyone, anyone? Of course, the blues, uh, the 12 bar blues, three chords, one, four, and five. What does that mean? Let's take B flat. That would be one, that would be four, that would be five. And that's it, yeah? One, four, and five. Here then, on the cathedral organ of Nancy Cathedral in Frankreich, in France, in La Belle France, is a blues in the key of B flat. Bet you've never heard this before. Well, some of you have probably never heard this before. Get ready for this.
bit of boogie woogie in a cathedral. Yes, I have done it before on real cathedral organs as well. It's great fun when you've got that wonderful acoustic going around. You can't do it too fast. You've got to be quite careful about it. Oh, it's great fun. It's great fun. So there we are, three chords. Three chords. Now, a little break from our three chord stories here. Anecdote time. Um, while I look for our next little hymn that I'm going to play. I think we'll use that one, actually. Um, simple harmonies. Um, Remember before Christmas, we had our Advent calendar. And during our Christmas Advent calendar, every day from the 1st to the 24th of December, including our live streams, Mrs. Garchor chose various pieces of music for me to play, which you had requested. And a lot of people requested some rather exciting pieces of music. And I played the pieces that Vanessa chose. I knew nothing about what was coming up. It was all very spontaneous, and I had to do it. Um, and during the live streams, I had to do it live, so I didn't even have a chance to, you know, have a go and practice it. Mm. Which was quite harrowing at times. There were some interesting choices in there. Um, but Vanessa just gave me the complete list of pieces of requests the other day. And there were some amazing pieces of music in there, some of which I have played before, some of which I've never played before. So I thought, because all of you people donated, um, to that, uh, to that, what's the word I'm looking for, to that um, idea, the idea of our advent calendar, I thought over the course of the next months, I would get through as many of those pieces as I possibly could. Now, there were some really interesting things in there. Let me just get some registrations here so I can show you what I mean. For example, someone requested something that I've never actually played before, but I've always wanted to, so now I have an excuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little series of videos on how I learn this piece of music. And it's a very famous piece of music, perfect on a French organ, a British organist on a French organ in Germany. How about that? That's, that's just, you know, that's about as European as it can get. And this piece of music in question is exactly that. It's a French composer who, um, who was commissioned to write a piece of music by Believe it or not, a British organ builder. Anyone guessing what I'm talking about yet? And um, the composer in question was Louis Vierne, who was uh, organist of Notre Dame in Paris at the time. And the organ builder in question was Henry Willis, of Henry Willis. Um, and the piece of music he requested was, write me a piece of music around the chimes of Big Ben. <laughs> Remember the chimes of Big Ben? And the funny thing about that piece of music is Vian got it wrong. He got the chimes the wrong way around. Uh, actually, it was Mrs. Vian that got the chimes the wrong way around because Mr. Willis sang them down the telephone to the Vian family and she scribbled them down. Vian himself was blind or almost completely blind, so he couldn't really sort of write it down himself. So Mrs. Vian wrote it down and then Vian went to the organ and composed this wonderful piece of music called Carillon de Westminster which is not a carry-on film from the British days, no, carry-on meaning the bells of Westminster. So, um, and it's a wonderful piece of music that, like I say, I've never actually learned. So as it was requested, I thought I would definitely go and do it. So that's something I'm going to be working on in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to be taking you along with me on the journey. We're going to look at the piece, analyze it, learn the different bits of it, go over silly things like fingering and uh, registration on an organ. I'll probably use the French organ here in Nancy. Why not? It's the best organ for it. And we will sort of learn it together, as it were. So that's the plan. So, and I'm going to do this throughout the year with different pieces of music. Now, I started this years ago uh, looking at the Bach Passacaglia in C minor, which a lot of people keep requesting. So that is coming back as well. So I'm going to keep going with the, um, keep going with the Passacaglia as well. We're going to learn it together this year. But Carillon de Westminster is one of those pieces. Another one of those pieces was, let me beef up the organ, is this by, Vier, uh, by Vidor. <laughs> First movement of Vidor's Sixth Symphony, which I 
did play years and years and years ago as a young organist, and um, it's time I refreshed it. So that's definitely something we can learn together. Um, people obviously, some, someone obviously requested the Vidor Toccata, but that's coming soon when we hit 50,000 subscribers. So you know what to do, hit the, hit the bells, hit the subscribe button, and the uh, sooner we get 50,000 together, the sooner you get Vidor Toccata. Mm, that's exciting. So uh, yes, uh, that was on the list. A Bach Trio Sonata, G Major, First Movement. That was on the list. Thank God she didn't choose that for me to play. I would have died. Um, I've never played a trio sonata in my life, so that's something we'll do together. Um, so that's something we'll definitely do together. Um, and that will, you'll see me sweat when I do that, because like I said, I've never done that before in my life. And... Um, uh, there were a Bach Vivaldi, the concerto of Bach Vivaldi. Anyway, I could go on all night just talking about the requests that were on the list, but I will go through it with you and we will learn individual pieces throughout the year. So I hope that's a good idea. I see Reen Schalkweig says, yes, good idea, uh, fantastic idea. So yes, I think it's a good idea and I think it guarantees lots of exciting content for you as well. So what do you think? Back to the music, enough chat. Here's a piece of music from the German hymn book again, and this time, this time, uh, where am I going? No, wrong button. Um, <laughs> boom. This time, it's a very soft little number, and it, again, it's a, piece, a very simple piece of music with a few harmonies only. It's one of the more modern hymns, but it's very nice. Listen to this.
Like I said, simple is often better. Earlier this evening, somebody said, how about Bass Toccata in Fugue in D minor? We haven't had that for a long time. I have an idea. You decide whether we get to play Bass Toccata and Fugue in D minor tonight. You get to decide. How do you get to decide? I think you know. It involves pressing buttons and letting us know you have pressed buttons. A thumbs up and a little dollar sign behind it. Yeah? Let's get some donations together and then we will play Bach Toccata and Fugue in D minor. One of, now that we have a pedal cam, oh, you can see what I'm doing down there. That would be frightening, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, it's like jazz musicians who have to play, oh, when the saints go marching and we only do it for the cash. <laughs> so if you want Bach Toccata and Fugue, you know what to do. Now, we had a rather interesting request earlier this evening and this is something this is something I've never done before. Well, that's not kind of, it's kind of true. I have done this kind of stuff before, but I've never played this piece before. And it was requested, let me change this to something a bit more sensible. I think we'll change it to that actually. Oh no, no, well not, well, no, that won't work. Uh, let's change it. I don't know, what will we change it to? I think we have to change it. No, we won't, we won't change the organ. Let's change it to, Huh. I don't know. No, I think we will leave it at that. That's kind of cool. That might work. I reach to the desk for a piece of paper. Earlier this evening, I asked a small group of guys if there were any requests for this evening's concert. That group is my private Garchos gang. Now, I'm not telling you who's in that private Garchos gang, but I have a private Garchos gang. And we talk about things going on in the organ world together. And I said, do you have any requests? And one of them sent me this. I requested this. And this is a piece of music I have never played in my life. It's, um, it's a piece of music by a certain, a certain composer of, shall we say, light music, easy listening, I think is the best way to do it. And um, the person in question is, of course, Bert Kempfert. Now, if you haven't heard of Bert, Bert Kempfert, um, you should. Bert Kempfert wrote all sorts of wonderful music from the, actually from the 50s, but he was quite famous from the 60s almost, and um, came up with all sorts of good fun stuff. And a very good friend of ours requested this one called the African Beat from uh, Bert Kempfert on a cathedral organ, please. Not, uh, normally I would play it on a theater organ, obviously. And this is, again, a piece of music that has very simple harmonies. It has basically three harmonies, and that's it. And it does that, and it repeats itself the whole time. And that's what makes this music so popular. Now, personal anecdote to this very piece of music. The original, the original melody, the original melody was played by was played by a guy called Ak van Royen, who, um, is Ak van Royen still alive? I don't know. Now, years ago, when I lived in Bonn, um, uh, occasionally I would put on jazz concerts, and we had a band, I think it was a local band from Bonn, and they, their guest star that evening was Ak van Royen, and Ak van Royen turned up and played the most wonderful jazz trumpet and flugelhorn all night. It was absolutely wonderful. And during one of the breaks, I went up to Ak and I said, Ella, I know offence, I loved all the stuff you did with Bert Kempfert. And he laughed and he said, it was the happiest time of my life. There you are. Personal anecdote about Ak van Royen, who was the original person who played this melody. <laughs>
It's so simple. Three chords, it keeps moving the whole time, and you get those lovely arpeggios going over time. I've never played that before. <sighs> so there we are. Oh, someone just wrote, Gunther, Gunther von Kastelauen just wrote, Ack van Royen died in 2021. Oh, well, there we are. That was a tribute then to the legendary Ack van Royen, who played that originally with the Bert Kempfert Orchestra. <laughs> Vanessa's just reminded me that somebody last week requested something and we can't remember what it was. On am um, Sonntag. Ach, das, ah, ooh. Oh, we'll do that with the theatre organ later. Okay, that's a good idea. Yes, someone requested something really quite exciting earlier on. Yeah, there we are. Now, I'm going to change. I'm going to change organs and I'm going to change to our theatre organ, which loads, come on, come on, which loads incredibly quickly. Look at that. Boom. We have a theatre organ. Ta-da! We have a theatre organ. Now, theoretically, I should have played that piece of music on a theatre organ. Now, there was another request this evening for a jazz standard from good old times, George Shearing's Lullaby of Birdland. This is for our friend Kai.
Lullaby of Birdland, as played for Kai on this wonderful instrument here, this Wonder Morton four manual, 24 rank theatre organ, beautifully sampled by the guys at Melotone. Hi, Graham, if you're watching. Um, someone was saying that loaded very fast. Yes, I have a Thunderbolt external drive connected to my 2017 iMac, which is ancient by today's standards and it only has one of those awful fusion drives in there so i have a thunderbolt external drive which means whew, it loads really fast it's, there's an nvme drive in there uh, and that's brilliant that really does the job now earlier this evening i received another request this is great keep the request coming in yeah when i post a sort of a community tab telling you about the live stream it would be great you know if you all got your requests in in advance so that I could then, you know, um, so that I could, you know, write some things down and get them going. But the request was actually for something we played on Sunday, so I won't play it again today. But it's for Colin, and Colin loves Fats Waller's music. So here's a piece of music by Fats Waller.
A Handful of Keys by Mr. Thomas Fats Waller. Quite a piece of music. I don't know why I decided to play that. It was spontaneous and it was for our friend over in the US, Colin. Now, some people are saying they're having problems with um, our PayPal link. That's weird. Um, Kannst du mal von deinem Handy aus da drauf klicken und gucken, ob es wirklich geht? Ja. Vanessa will check it out for you. Ähm, ich habe gerade gesehen, oder Leute haben gerade geschrieben, die haben Probleme mit unserem PayPal-Link heute. Also wir gucken mal, was tatsächlich da los ist. Vanessa prüft gerade nach. During that time, I will play something a little quieter. Ja? Guck mal, ob du irgendwas schicken kannst. Also log ein, einloggen und gucken, ob das geht. Bist du schon eingeloggt? She's checking it out. While she does that, um, let me play a piece of music, something a little softer for now. How are we doing on the um, how are we doing on the Toccata and Fugue thing? Let's find out.
That was for Wolfgang. That was Mackie Messer, otherwise known as Mac the Knife. Now, the original, I told you about this last Sunday, didn't I? That was the request. It was Wolfgang's request for Mackie Messer. Um, there's a wonderful old version of that with Berthold Brecht playing a theatre organ in Berlin somewhere, probably in Potsdam in the theatre where it's still there. And, um, and Kurt Weill singing. Or is it the other way around? It's Kurt Weill playing the organ and Berthold Brecht singing. Yeah, it's that way around. And uh, it's, it's so 1920s Berlin, it's frightening. Um, I can't replicate the voice of Mr. Berthold Brecht, but it's awful. It's one of those sort of, one of those sort of awful nasal sort of 1920s voices, not helped by the fact that it was recorded on 78. Um, go and find it, it's probably on YouTube, and it's probably hilarious, but if you can find it, enjoy it. Right. How are we doing on our... Um, oh, actually, no, I don't want that. I want... I want this. And I want this. Someone loved... Uh, on Sunday night, I played something by Jelly Roll Morton, a piece of music called... What did I play? Um, the Wolverines. I played the Wolverines. And someone said, I love Jelly Roll Morton. Can you do something else? So here's something you probably don't know.
<sighs> that was a piece of music by Mr. Jelly Roll Morton, quite simply called The Chant. And um, it's in a hundred different keys. It's very clever stuff, uh, all this sort of... It was a, a, a spooky serenade was its, was its um, subtitle. The Chant, A Spooky Serenade. Very bizarre piece of music. There were various different recording of it, uh, recordings of it throughout the years doing different things. And that was one of the later ones where um, he went completely crazy and um, really sort of enjoyed himself. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing on the Bach, Toccata and Fugue in D minor front? Any ideas, Mrs. Cartron? Bitte? Was ist mit dem CD? Hat jemand gefragt? Oh, okay, yes, good. English or Deutsch? Deutsch. Deutsch. Okay, somebody asked, somebody asked um, about our CD project. Yes, um, I'll do it in English and I'll do it in German. We are waiting for news, is the simple answer. Um, before Christmas, before Christmas, we put out the um, we put out the recordings. We did everything. We got it all sorted. We got all the paperwork sorted. And then something came back with, uh, a legal thing came back with, ah, we're not, we don't like the title. <clears throat> because the title is very close to a similar title that was made back in the 90s. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, somebody recorded a series of television programs back in the 90s with a similar title. Mm, a problem is that's not copyrighted or not patented in any way. So um, that went to a legal dispute. And we are waiting to get green light on that. Um, if we don't get the green light on it, it means we have to change the title of the whole thing, which means all the print work, all the CDs that have already been printed, the, the, the actual physical CDs that have been printed, they need to be changed. And that would be very expensive and very annoying. Uh, so we're kind of hoping that that won't be the case. So we're waiting, fingers crossed. Okay, auf Deutsch. Uh, unser, unser CD-Projekt. Ja, ist das alles fertig? Aber wir warten auf grünes Licht wegen des Titels. Hm. Ähm, zurück in den 90ern gab es was Ähnliches. Es gab ein ähnliches Projekt im Fernsehen ähm, mit einem ähnlichen Titel. Und ähm, die GEMA hier in Deutschland hat gesagt, ah, das müssen wir prüfen. Und natürlich, während die das prüfen, dauert das ewig. Das war vor Weihnachten schon. Und ähm, das Problem ist, falls wir es ändern müssen, Bedeutet das, wir müssen die ganze Print-Sachen und die CD-Rohlinge selber entweder neu bedrücken, was nicht sehr professionell aussehen würde, oder komplett neu machen lassen. Und das wäre natürlich äußerst ungünstig und äh, äußerst teuer. Ähm, wie gesagt, wir warten, wir kriegen wahrscheinlich grünes Licht, es muss nur geklärt werden. Also... Was auf jeden Fall passieren kann, ist die Downloads von den Stücken. Ähm, sobald ich grünes Licht bekomme, kann ich die Downloads sofort rausschicken und dann habt ihr das. Weil das betrifft unsere Drucksachen nicht. Das heißt, sobald wir grünes Licht haben, kriegen alle Leute, die unser Projekt gesponsert haben, kriegen sofort die elektronische Version von den Stücken. Das ist gar kein Problem. Die CDs kommen dann natürlich später. Also sobald die fertig sind. Theoretisch sind die schon fertig, aber... Wir warten, auf, wie gesagt, auf legales grünes Licht und dann geht es los. Also, das kann ich leider nicht ändern, das ist leider so. Ähm, so sind die Sachen in der Welt, ist ein bisschen nervig, ist es schon. Ähm, aber dürfte nicht mehr so lange dauern. Das war ein kleines Update. Ich mache in den nächsten Tagen ein, äh, ein gesondertes Video darüber für die Leute, die nicht live gucken, damit wir alle auf dem gleichen Stand sind und damit wir alle Bescheid wissen. Aber wie gesagt, sobald grünes Licht da ist, kommen die elektronischen Kopien, die äh, Downloads, äh, die werden sofort rausgeschickt. Also, das ist es. Und für die Leute, die noch keine CD bestellt haben, dauert noch ein bisschen. Die Sponsoren, die äh, Supporter kriegen das natürlich zuerst. Und einen Monat oder so später kriegt ihr die auch noch angeboten. <lacht> um, so, for those of you who order the CD, you of course get them first. And uh, anyone else who wants to buy one will have to wait a little bit. So let's say I wait about a month after that. Uh, the people who supported the project, they get first digs, basically. So after that, everything will be back to normal. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting late. Now, somebody requested earlier on this evening, and I didn't see many thumbs up. So that's good. So uh, no thumbs up means I don't play it. 
Or did I get lots of thumbs up and I just didn't see them? Mrs. Gartshaw, Daumen hoch für Bach oder nicht? Vanessa hat noch keine Daumen hoch für Bach gesehen. Dann hm, müssen wir mal gucken. Hat jemand No Toccata geschrieben? <lacht> <lacht> äh, Fragezeichen oder Ausrufezeichen? Ähm, no, no, ohne alles. No Toccata, that sounds good to me. No, um, <lacht> So, okay. Um, yeah, if you've, if you've donated, if you want our Bach's Toccata and if you D minor for the new year, then thumbs up now. You have two minutes. If you don't want it, thumbs down.
The St. Louis Blues. Well, it looks like we're going to do it. But we're going to do it on a Baroque organ. And we're going to do it. Yes, there we are. Oh, look at this. Look at the speed of this. Woof. That's exciting, isn't it? That's Oberfellach, which is a lovely little uh, Baroque organ loading up real quick. I like this. Now, you notice the theatre organ was a lot faster, and this classical organ, it's a very small classical organ, but it was much, much, much faster loading up. And uh, the reason for that is, of course, hold on, what's the, oh, that's not right. Or is it? Ah, hold on, that, 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 no, that's definitely not right. Hmm. Okay, I thought I had a combination set up for Toccata and Fugue. I'm going to go get the music for Toccata and Fugue, which is in my wonderful, new, sorted, beautiful... Uh, is it this one or is it the other one? I can never remember. It is this one. Um, in my new, wonderful music office. Do you want the whole thing, the Toccata and the Fugue, or just the Fugue? What do you think this has got to Alles oder nur Toccata oder nur Fuga? Oh, so ist das jetzt <laughs> Wenn du willst, kannst du das entscheiden. <laughs> it's getting difficult to get in and out of the organ here with all these cables flying around. Yeah, Alexander Wunderlich says. Alexander Wunderlich says. Mm -hmm. um, das, das Video gesehen, das spielt das Trio Minor. Minor swing. Bam, bam, bam. Bidu, du, du. Bum, bum, bum. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, Sunday night jazz at the organ for, for Wen? Alexander? Alexander for Alexander Wunderlich. Okay, let's do it. Right, do you really want this? I think you do, don't you? Now, why is that not the actual? That's the fugue. So where's the toccata? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll be quite clever about this. Um, where does it go to big? There's big. That's big. That's not so big. So we can go backwards and forwards there. Okay. Spontaneous. I haven't played this for months. Get ready.
Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Er hat irgendwas im Bandbau auf vier Monate abgeschlossen. Wer hat das gesagt? Oh, <laughs> that then was the unpracticed uh, version of uh, the Toccata and Fugue. I haven't played that since I last played it, um, which was a very long time ago. Before Christmas, a long time anyway. When did I last play it? I played it, uh, I played it on that organ, actually, I think. No, I didn't. I played it on Nitra, when Nitra came out, the new organ in Nitra, I played it there. Yeah, it's a fun piece of music to play. It's a kind of you should play it sort of regularly just to keep your fingers going and fingers and feet, obviously. Uh, definitely good fun. Yes, definitely good fun. Right, I think it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to finish off this evening's festivities. And as a piece of fun and games, I'm going to play something boogie woogie like on this baroque organ. This is the organ in Oberfellach. Oberfellach is a little town in the south of Austria, close to the Italian border. And I have given the organ an Italian Baroque tuning, which makes it sound very fruity. And especially when you play things like this. Here's a boogie-woogie style thing on this magnificent Baroque organ. Yes, it is possible. And no, it is not sacrilegious. It's wonderful. Virgil Fox would be proud. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Friday Night is Organ Music Tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for joining us in the chat. Thank you for joining us with your wonderful support and donations. Always a very, uh, very appreciated. Thank you for requesting a piece of music that I had to concentrate on tonight. That was the Bach. We'll be back on Sunday evening with Sunday Night is Organ Music Night. Sunday Night will be slightly more gentle in character. At least that's the plan, but there will be a bit of jazz in there as well, just for some fun. So, I wish you a happy weekend. Enjoy the weekend. It's getting a bit snowy and cold here in this part of Germany, in this part of Europe. So, wish us all the best with that. I better get the salt out on the streets. Um, we're not allowed to use salt anymore. Psh, don't tell anyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for taking part. I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday evening. Don't forget to spread the word. Don't forget to give us a quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. As soon as we get to 50,000, it's Vido Staccata and a possible appearance by Mrs. Karchova. Don't tell her. Thanks for watching, folks. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye.